So hello and welcome to the Computer Lab on YouTube and in today's video I'm going to be looking at the SimCam 1S. So SimCam got in touch and asked if I wanted to do a review of this SimCam 1S camera. Uh, obviously they'd seen some of the other videos that I've covered on my channel uh, and if you're new to my channel I've also done uh, reviews of the Hikvision cameras, the Unify cameras, the uh, Nest Hello and stuff like that. So obviously I cover all the uh, the tech stuff and I'm interested in anything like this uh, to review on my channel. So obviously I said, yes, send me a camera and I'll have a look at it. Uh, but I'm no way affiliated with SimCam in any way. Uh, so this will be an honest sort of look at the camera and the build and stuff like that. Uh, I won't go into too much detail in the functionality, but I will look at the menus and the setup and stuff like that once I get it unboxed. And one last thing, if there's any links in the description, they will almost certainly be affiliate links um, if I ever get round to setting that side of the business up. Um, so if there's a link below, that will be an affiliate link, which basically just means I'll get a small cut in the profit if you buy from that link. Uh, having said that, quite a lot of my videos don't have the links in the bottom because I've just not got round to setting that side of the, like I said, that side of the business up. Okay, so without any further ado, I think we should get this uh, camera unboxed and let's have a look, see what you get in the box and what you get for your money. Okay, so let's get started. So if there's any parts in the video that I can speed up, I will do just to keep this video as short as possible. So looking on the side of the box, we get uh, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence push alert. We get artificial intelligence event recording. We also get dual band Wi-Fi. This is running on 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz band, which is good because if you're using Nest in the UK, you'll know that they only run 2.4. I know they run the 5 gig in the States uh, and other countries, uh, but it's good to see that we've got both bands options here. We also get free local storage. Again, if you're used to using Nest and, uh, and Amazon and using their subscription-based services, that's great that you can store it locally. And you've also got an artificial intelligent activity zone where you can um, put zoned areas around uh, sort of items on your desk or doorways and it'll monitor them areas for you. So let's get the box flipped over and let's have a look at what it says on the back. So SimCam have sent me the black model, but it's also available in white. And obviously it says SD card next to it, which comes with the actual camera. The model number is SC-A101. And it says a smarter home with AI vision on board. So you, with the AI vision, what it's talking about is the person detection, the facial recognition, the car detection, pet detection, and object tracking. So we'll have a look a bit more in detail uh, in the menus. Like I said, I'm not going to go too much in detail, but I will touch on the different tracking options you get. And on the opposite side of the box, what do we get on here? We get 1080p uh, recording, HD, we get starlight, night vision, lag-free live stream two-way audio and a 360 degree pan and tracking. So just flipping around to the front, it also comes with a Google Assistant and also works with Alexa. So basically you can control it with Google Assistant and uh, Alexa and it's also IFTTT. If you don't know what that stands for, it stands for if this then that and it's basically just another way of controlling the camera through another device. Um, so yeah, some good options. Really good to see the Google Assistant and the Alexa option on there. Uh, I probably won't touch on it in this video because it's already going to be long but it says it's built in so uh, that's good enough for me. So let's get the box on opened. Like I said, I'll speed this section up just to keep things uh, fairly short and let's have a look the camera from here so this is the actual camera um, I'm not sure if that should move there at this point so that's why I'm not forcing it um, but when you do get the camera going you'll notice it only moves in the 360 degree rotation it doesn't move in the up and down motion uh, so that's the camera quite well built speaker on the back there as you can see a uh, little access panel with an iron key on the back there but it feels nice and heavy uh, nice and solid in the hand uh, so a nice looking uh, unit, not too bad. Not as well built as the Nest and the Google. Don't feel as the same quality as them, but it's it's good enough. It doesn't feel too cheap. You also get a, a mount, so you can mount it uh, on the side of a house, or on the side inside of the house, on a wall or something like that. And it also comes with a sticky pad. I'll just cam focus the camera there. But you can see there, you have this small bit that you can screw over to the wall, or you can put a sticky pad on the black section and then stick it all one unit. Um, actually to the side of a wall and mount the camera upside down or sideways uh, and you have the option to flip the camera view in the menu and you also get included the uh, power supply uh, as you can see 
this is a UK plug and it is um, branded as you can see there it's branded with the sim cam as well so it's not a third party uh, power supply uh, well it's, it's branded with a sim cam so that's a good uh, good thing as well shows that they're uh, doing all their own gear or at least branding it with the sim cam logo and in the little bag you get the allen key which is to get into the access panel at the back uh, you get some screws and raw plugs uh, in this same bag and you also get like uh, the um, small pin for ejecting or resetting um, it's the same one that you sort of get in the iPhones for ejecting the SIM cards. So it looks very similar. Uh, I presume it's to reset the actual camera in this case. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, you get for your money. You get the camera, you get a power supply, uh, a mount for mounting the camera, and you also get a small bag of bits. So let's have a look at this access panel. So if I can just get the camera, there we go. A bit better view. And it's just a small Allen key on the back. And we'll just wind this off and just have a look what we've got under here. So I'm presuming the uh, SIM card slot is behind here. And uh, yeah, be careful not to lose that so it's not self-retaining. Uh, struggling to get that out. So I just got a small screwdriver off camera then. And then let's try again with my big fingers. See if I can get the screwdriver in it instead just to open this so this is a bit tricky but i suppose it's not going to be open that much anyway once it's opened uh, either to reset the camera or to load a different sim card in uh, a different um, sd card in then i can't see us needing to use it that often so i can't really call them out for that you can see the reset button just under where it says reset there um which i'll just indicate with an arrow in a second but you can see the um the reset uh, button and you can also see the SD card just next to it there so I'll just pop it out and in fact I can't get to that cam that uh, SD card as you can see with my big fingers got no chance of getting that out so again I'll have to just go off camera a second and just get a pair of tweezers and then just push it in and back out again get the tweezers on it to get the card out and they go but it's nice that a card's included it's 16 gigabyte so at least they're putting a card in with the camera where many manufacturers wouldn't even do that so i'll just freeze it here just a second just so you can see the reset button uh like so so that's just to reset the camera you'll need that when you're setting the camera initially up or if you want to factory reset it there's a speaker on the back of the camera as i'm just indicating it with my finger um, also you've got the power supply port there that's where the uh, power supply plugs in and it is a tight fit and you've also got the mounting hole there this is where your little chrome uh, mounting point goes in you see this little uh, pop on the back for uh, so, so you can screw it in to secure it once you've got it mounted uh, and you can also got the option to use the black um, mounting cover with a, a sticky pad or something like that um, depending on how you want to mount it. So you can mount it upside down. And in fact, in the video, what I'll do, I'll make a temporary little bracket and I'll probably hang it up that way around so you can uh, get to see the camera spinning around. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but I've done other videos where I've mounted them like that. So I'll take this mount out. Um, and then I think we'll just have a quick look at the power supply. And this is quite tight um, in here. Uh, so when I try and put this in now, it's... Um, it's tighter than you normally expect. I don't know if you're looking to give it a bit of a seal, uh, just to not to weatherproof it because it's not um, it's not IP rated in any way. Uh, but yeah, it's quite tight in there, which is it's not a bad thing. It goes in nice and firmly, so it doesn't come out easily. So that's uh, that's good, and that's it plugged in. So okay, so I'll, this is the bracket I've made. Uh, so I'll just speed this bit up. Just mount this bracket on the wall. So two screws. I'm not going to sticky pad it. I'll just put two screws in. I'll put the four in. Um, so you can see that and I've done it with the uh, the pop facing towards the camera just so you can see it well that should be facing up if you mount it in this way because uh, this sort of the square goes into the camera like so and it just slots in and if I just put a view from the top and you'll see just where I'm indicating with the red arrow that's where the sort of the small screw will go in uh, like I say you, you saw the the point on the chrome a square that should be facing up where this small hole is so when you put the screw in it locates in there and then keeps the camera secure okay so now we've got the camera uh, mounted let's get some uh, let's get it plugged into the power supply and get some power onto the camera so again like i said earlier it's quite tight in there so i'll plug it in and then i'll just hook the camera on the mount tuck the cable around the back so it doesn't get in the way of the picture and then we're good to go i have already downloaded the simcam app and i've already registered with simcam so what we're going to do now is just start the camera up it does a 360 degree rotation to initialize the camera 
So you see it rotating now. So while that's happening, I'm also going to open the app. Like I've said, I've already registered, so I'm just going to click on done. You won't see me putting any details in there. And it, you're presented with the initial screen, which shows you the um, sort of tutorial of the app itself. And you saw me there just pointing to the little LED, which you can see in the middle, which is green at the moment. The, when you first boot the camera, it goes red, uh, and then you get uh, several different stages of the actual LED depending on where you're up to in the app. So a solid green means it's powered on, a blinking green means it's searching for networks, then you get a solid blue one which means it's uh, connecting to a network. Uh, and as you can see at the moment mine is solid green so we're all good there. So like I said getting back to the app I've just clicked on the plus icon in the top corner uh, and now we are asking for the Wi-Fi password so you put your Wi-Fi password in and then you're presented with this QR code. Now you can't see me do this on the camera, but basically you hold your phone up towards the SIM cam. It scans the QR code. Um, and once it's scanned the code, it then adds that camera to your account. So it's a real um, nice way of doing it, a really easy setup. And once you've followed that process, uh, the camera is then added to your account. So here you can click the refresh button if it doesn't show. Um, but your camera should then pop up and as you can see there you can see we've got a box that says it connecting in the top right hand corner uh, and the only thing that's really niggled me a bit using this app is the it shows you the picture you can see there but it shows it sort of stationary it doesn't uh, automatically go into a sort of a live feed uh, now that might, might be something that they change on an update um, but you have to push the play button for it to uh, for the live feed to come on in this initial menu. Like I said, they might change that going forward. So let's have a look at some of these menus. So I'm going to hit the private button now, and the camera is in sleep mode. Would you like to open private mode? So click confirm. You get this nice confirmation voice uh, confirming that you've saved a setting to the camera, which is a nice touch. Uh, the LED at the moment has gone off because we're in this private mode. So that's a good way of telling. It would have been nice to have a manual button on there, but let's turn this back live like so and you heard the voice confirming that we've now put it back in live mode I'm just going to click on the play button in the middle like so and then the live uh, the feed should then go live which it is as you can see there and you can see me talking on the camera and I apologize that we're not using that but that had some bad interference on it so I'm going to do a voiceover and you saw me there pointing to the LED which you can't quite see but the, that LED has gone blue at the moment which is showing us that we are live so I'm going to hit on the detecting and if there is a person in the monitor zone you will not be alerted do you still want to turn off person detection so I'm not going to turn it off I'm going to leave it on so I'm going to hit cancel at this point uh, so we get the person detection and you can see the blue box around my face and there's a green box around your body and when the camera has been on the bench it's been really quite good at tracking it's a bit stuttery when it moves across not uh, massively smooth as you can see it sort of does it in uh, in steps, uh, but it does track really well and does keep an eye on the person in the in the picture. And you see there, you get the person detected. I'm on an iPhone, so you get the drop down uh, alert, and you can turn them on or off. Uh, but you can see it tracking me across. If I stand up here, you can see me going across the actual field of view, and the camera adjusts to fit in with where it's going. So. Like I say, it's been on the bench for a while, uh, this camera, and it seems to do that tracking really well. Uh, and, I, and I might, if I have got some footage of uh, night footage and daytime footage, but the footage is really good, uh, and the tracking is really good as well. So a nice, clear picture. So they've, they've done well with the lens and the software, maybe needs some improvements, but it's doing uh, really good at this, uh, at this early stage. Anyways, next up, we've got the LAM mode button on the bottom there. So I'll click on the LAM mode. I'm only going to touch on this briefly, uh, but I'll just read out what it says. So when you click on LAM mode, you get the artificial intelligence event notifications and recordings in the monitoring area are still valid. And permissions on the remotely seeing video stream and recording will be turned off if you confirm that. There. I'm just going to cancel. I'm going to move straight on to the setting menu. And in here, you get the different device settings. The top one is the device's name. Now I've just left it as SIM cam, but you can change it to whatever you want. Next one is uh, the device settings where you can change your luminous, your contrast, your saturation. You can mute the camera. You can flip it vertically, which you can see I've enabled because I've got the camera sort of upside down. You can flip it horizontal. You can disable the night vision and you can also enable pedestrian tracking. Next up is the video encoding uh, video encoding format, H.265 or H.264. It's default at 265, so I've just left it on that. And your next up is your working schedule. You can have it working all day, or you can set it to a custom time. So that's really good. You can have it just coming on at nights, for example. Uh, and your next one up after that is your camera information, which tells you your firmware version, IP address, uh, and your also RTSP stream in there. 
You get alerts, video duration, so you can set to 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds for the video duration when it uh, gets alerted. But next up, you've got your AI settings, and you've got your AI detection, uh, which we'll go into now. You've got person detection, pet detection, vehicle detection, and show detection area, uh, where you can turn them, toggle them on and off, depending on what you're wanting to track. So I'm going to click on zone settings now. I'll have to spin the camera around because it puts it in sort of uh, landscape mode. Uh, and you'll see as I click on zone settings, and it gives you this hint, which you can turn off, but it's saying select at least three points. You see on the instructions there telling me to identify an area that I want to monitor. Uh, so in here you can click on uh, the different areas you want to monitor and you can see the bounding box around my face and the green box around my body. Uh, but when uh, you're trying to set this mode, what I initially thought and was trying to do was drag the uh, sort of corner nodes down, which you can see on the screen there in each of the corners. I was trying to drag them from the corners to select the bounding box. Uh, but what you do is you can have a drag your finger or uh, point on, but you can see on the iPhone as I'm trying to drag these nodes down, it kept bring up the menus and I've purposely left this in just to show you because it's, it's not quite uh, in, intuitive at this point on how that works uh, but once you confirm your area you just click the tick button uh, and it confirms that area and then underneath that you've got the object monitoring so this is if you're trying to uh, monitor an object on your desk or within a room or something like that so you can see uh, the toggle there is to enable it so show the monitoring area during the live streaming mode so all that does it just shows you a box when you're watching the camera on its uh, live feed and then last on this menu, you've got the zone settings uh, for your object monitoring. Well, you see there, it says highlight the object with red frame and notifications will be sent and the video will be recorded when the object is moved or, or disappears. So for example, if you're trying to monitor, say, a laptop on a desk or the keyboard, uh, sort of just trying to put it in the, uh, the keyboard in the view there, uh, you draw your bounding box around the item and then hit the tick icon and then that saves it to its memory. So anytime that item gets removed, it will then be alerted to it on your phone or tablet device. So I'll hit the tick and then we'll go back to the menu again. And then we've got the menu back up again. Um, and that's all the AI detections menu gone through. Uh, so we'll go into underneath that you've then got your face recognition. And then in here you can just put different faces and it recognises who's in front of the camera. Uh, you've then got your playback button, uh, which I'm not going to go into because it's pretty obvious what it is. It's the playback uh, for the camera itself where you can scrub on uh, along the timeline and stuff like that. Uh, so let's go back to the menu again. And now you can, uh, in the system settings, then you've got your LED, which you can toggle on and off. That's the LED on the camera. You've then got your time zone proofreading. Uh, so again, you set your time zone if you want to do. Uh, so I'll just say it's a London because that's where I'm at. Uh, then you've got your NAS hard drive configuration underneath that. You've got the firmware update, sorry there, but then you've got your NAS hard drive disk configuration, which is really good for one of these cameras. And I have tried this with a Synology uh, 214 Play, I think it was, and it works great at saving the actual uh, footage to a folder on that NAS. So you can see I've just put um, a NAS, uh, the my NAS IP address in there, and it saves it brilliantly to that folder. Um, so yeah, that's a really good thing for the, this type of camera. Uh, not many cameras have that. The next one underneath that is the SD card format, where you can format the card that's in the camera. It comes with this 16 gig card. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to delete it. I'll just cancel, but you can format the card within here. And then the last but not least is the reset your Wi-Fi. And again, I'm not obviously going to reset the Wi-Fi at this stage. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly touch on the live view window because when you push the, where I'm indicating there with the red arrow, but where you push the double-ended white arrow on the live view feed, you're then presented with a different menu, which I will go to into in a second. But I just want to show you this where you can swipe your fingers to move the camera. So if I just get rid of the hint, I will move the camera, but what you'll also notice is I'll probably get an object monitoring because it's monitoring the keyboard, which is flashing white, the bounding box around it. Uh, so it's tracking me, but it's also got the object monitoring on. So if I swipe it across uh, both a couple of ways, and just you can move the camera manually like that, I then get the object monitoring. It thinks the object's moved because I've moved the camera, uh, which is probably just a quirk at this stage, uh, but it is nevertheless there. So I'll just come back out of that menu, and we'll just touch on the bottom menu that runs along the bottom of the uh, camera app. So the first one is obviously the camera, which we're on at the moment. And the next one along is alerts. Uh, and when you click on alerts in here, you can see all the different alerts that the uh, camera that has triggered the camera. 
and you can do all the usual things that you can in these camera apps. So you can search if you've got multiple cameras, you can search on which camera you want. You can also uh, search on what type of detection it was. So it was an object monitoring. Um, if it was a person detection and stuff like that in this particular area. So if I click on obviously all the cameras, you can see there I've got only got one in there. Uh, I click on all detections. I've got the different ways to uh, select in there. So I'll click on object monitoring. It'll pick up on just the detections for the object monitoring. Um, and then along the on the far right also you've got your date range so you can search on date and when things were triggered within a particular day or week and then next along the bottom you've got the uh, library uh, and in here this is where it saves uh, your snapshots or videos uh, and this is where you can access them to view them uh, and you can see at the top there with the red box around it you've got the um, you can have a select on picture or video or if you click on the picture it expands it or the video it will play it uh, so it's just the area where you go to look through the footage uh, and stored items. And the next thing is the setting menu on the right. And in there you've got your sub account, facial recognition settings. Uh, you've also got your safety verification where you can turn on fingerprint, uh, login and, and gesture control like uh, Android devices has. Uh, so that's um, a nice little touch as well. You've got the emergency contact, customer feedback form, some instructions. And the real interesting one for this type of camera is the AI Life at the bottom. So if I click on AI Life uh, in this menu, you'll see that we're presented with uh, an Alexa, Google Assistant, or the IFTTT menu. And this for this type of camera is really good. It means you can uh, obviously turn on your SIM cam privacy mode uh, for when you're getting home, like it says in the menu there. Uh, and you can do all the automation things. I'm not sure how much detail it goes into and how much control it gives you over the camera. Uh, because that would just expand on the video if we start going into them details. But it's good to see that um, SIM cam have included it in this camera and it's uh, give you the options to control the camera via them. Virtual assistants by Google and Amazon. Okay, so one last menu to go through. So let's push on the live view and the double arrow as indicated there. Let's get rid of the hint. Uh, and then let's look at this menu on the bottom. So we're going to start on the far left hand side, the one that looks like a speaker, a muting speaker. What that allows you to do, if you push it on, it allows you to listen live to uh, if somebody's, say, talking near the camera uh, and it lets you listen to you on your phone. Uh, so it's using the mic on the camera and then it's putting that um, that talking or whatever it is you can hear so you can hear it on your phone. And you can turn that on or off so you don't have to constantly listen. Uh, so with a cross, obviously, that is muted. The next one along is uh, the snapshot button where you can take a snapshot of whatever's on the camera. So if you want to grab it and then save it into your library like the library was looking at before, you push on the snapshot button and it saves that to your library page. As you can see there, snapshot success uh, and it have a look in your library page and it will be in there. The next one along is the video. Uh, so this way you can record a video, uh, manually record a video, so it's not automated. So if you wanted to just push on this button, you can actually record what's on the other end of the camera. So you can see there. So the camera is now uh, recording me, as you can see, saying re flash and recording. And I hit the same button again. It then stops the recording and saves it to the uh, library page. Uh, so that's just a good way of just capturing something that you might want to uh, capture off the cuff or something like that. And then the next on the menu is the microphone, which allows you to speak to somebody on the other other side of the camera. So basically, if you're watching somebody and you want to shoo them away, you hit that button, talk to them, and tell them to go away. Simple as that. And then the next on the uh, bottom menu is the focus uh, focus object monitoring. And we went into detail on this earlier. This is where you can draw a box around an item that's on your desk uh, that uh, you want to be alerted to if it gets moved. It doesn't have to be on a desk, a table, or something in the area. Uh, so it's uh, as you draw the box around it, so for example, just drawn a box around the camera, the camera, it starts to flash, just tell you that that's what it's monitoring. And you might want to, uh, you know, cover a keyboard or something like that, or it could be anything, a laptop on a desk, it could be a plant, uh, just something that you want to know if it moves, you want to get the trigger to be alerted to the fact that it's moved. So like I said, I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. Uh, we'll go on to the next bit on the, the menu, which is the one highlighted with red. And this is the uh, focused uh, focus area monitoring. Uh, so this allows you to monitor a, uh, monitor a doorway or something like that. And you can see there, uh, if you monitor in a certain area, uh, the video will be recorded uh, when there's something happens within that particular area that you've highlighted to be monitored. So when you go into that, then uh, you can pick up uh, some points, some nodes where you want to track. So say, for example, if there's a door there where I've just put the uh, four nodes, uh, then 
I can hit the tick and then it will monitor that particular area. And if that was a doorway and it opened, then that video will be recorded to my uh, SIM cam or my NAS driver, where I've got the SIM cam pointing to um, to save footage to. And then the last item that you can select in this menu is to sound the alarm. So that basically uh, sounds a loud alarm on the camera, which I've just highlighted with the red box there. I'm not going to activate it now, uh, but uh, it is loud and it is an alarm. And that is the end of my review for the SimCam 1S. And thank you very much if you've gone this far through the video. It is 25 minutes long, so thank you very much for watching it all the way through. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube. And please do hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video. Obviously hit the dislike button if you didn't. And also hit me up with any comments or questions below. They are always appreciated. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube.